In Diablo 2, there's a lot of fairly well-known information, but also a good deal of obscured or misunderstood information. Today we're going to be looking at the hidden aspects of the assassin to give you an edge when building your character. Number 1. Probably the most well-known on this list is that traps are deployed using attack speed, not cast rate. So lightning sentry, fire blast, wake of fire, etc. all have the amount of time you wait for them to come out based on how fast you can swing your currently equipped stick. The only cast rate skills of the assassin are found in the shadow discipline tree. Number two, still in the trap tree, it's worth noting that autonomous traps like the Death Sentry, Wake of Inferno, Charge Bolt Sentry, etc. that shoot on their own are treated as summons and as such do not benefit from anything like Rainbow Facets, Crescent Moon, etc. since their attacks are summoned from them, not you. Number three, Blade Fury, Blade Sentinel, and Blade Shield all have a lot of hidden or misunderstood aspects, from Blade Shield using weapon durability, but Fury and Sentinel not taking any themselves. There's also the two-handed weapon penalty for Fury and Sentinel that's not displayed. The most important one, and this is because it's a more popular skill, is how Blade Fury is actually impacted by attack rating, even though it doesn't display anything about it, and how, in an even more odd twist, the attack rating is not impacted by Claw Mastery either. Like Smite, these skills can have a whole video kind of dedicated to them individually due to the depth of their function and to what things carry over and don't carry over, but these are the more basic points. Number four, taking a quick dip into the martial arts tree, we again have a comparison to Smite in that kicks are greatly influenced by what weapon you're using. Even though the damages are based on boots, you actually still get some of the effects of the weapon in your hand, the most important being the attack rating boost. But the oddest one being attack range. A kick with a spear, for example, will be longer range than a kick with a dagger. Weird, huh? Number five, moving into the shadow tree at last, we have a few things to look at, but the first one is the odd case of weapon block. Despite a lot of people thinking it functions like a normal block, it instead has a lot of quirks to it, including blocking otherwise unblockable things such as smite and fire damage per second, but also instead of having a movement penalty, it only works while stationary and is 0% while moving, outside of actions like whirlwind which count you as still stationary. Number six, Fade is an extremely powerful skill and probably one of my favorite assassin skills in the game, providing not only resists, it has a hidden function of adding 1% damage reduction per level. On the downside, it can also reduce the duration of shrines due to its effect on curses, though in an odd manner, since if you first use Burst of Speed, then grab the shrine, then recast Fade, you will not have the reduction since it only applies whenever you receive the shrine, not continuously like cleansing. Number seven, shadows are a special breed of summons since they're the only ones that can actively cast class specific skills. Due to how the shadow skill levels are determined, you can actually make your shadow have stronger traps than your character even, by manipulating how high or low its skill levels are when it's cast. So since synergies work for shadows, it allows it to easily get far more than 20 points into a single synergy. Say if you have a level 25 lightning trap from the shadow, it'll actually end up being a 25 point synergy for whenever it casts the Death Sentry. So anyway, Shadow Warriors are especially loved for this because, well, you can manipulate the skills they cast by switching your skills respectively. It is worth noting synergies reset whenever the warrior or master dies or is otherwise unsummoned. They also get equipment at specific levels like Valkyries, but I think the skill effect is a lot cooler. Number eight. This one actually applies to Paladins too, but I saved it for this one because Mind Blast is more used than Conversion. But anyway, Ever wonder why sometimes it feels like your converted monsters from Mind Blast are weaker than they normally are when you're fighting them? This is actually because while converted, if your character level is lower than the monster's original level, their stats are scaled down to match your character level. Things such as attack rating, damage, and defense are lower. Their stats are reverted when conversion wears off. It is unfortunate, but it does not work the other way, so if you are higher level than the monster, it just stays at its default level. Today's bonus fact is going to be mild, since most people don't usually understand the value of scout attack skills, of which the assassin actually has a very nice one, Psychic Hammer. Psychic Hammer has a trait that used to be shared with a few skills, where it would actually try to target something in its own little small radius of the click if no target was actively selected, and it wouldn't cast if it couldn't find one. This meant that you could cast it to see if there's an enemy just off the edge of the screen that you haven't aggroed yet. It's fairly rare to find on a skill these days, but still fairly useful, especially if you're a frequent user of Cloak of Shadows and want to know when to use it to make it more efficient. As always, feel free to leave anything I missed down below or even gloat if you knew all of these and leave a like if you learned something new or useful today so YouTube will know you want more Diablo 2 content.